Okay, everybody. I'm going to turn it over to Adrian to announce our next work session. Thank you. Our second work session is the historic Millwork District Master Plan Update. I will turn it over to Economic Development Director Jill Connors. Hi, good evening. Welcome again. Jill Connors, Economic Development Director. Thanks for being here and sticking out. Uh, what we hope is not too much longer of an evening for you. We've got some good information, provide you an update on where we've been, where we are right now. We're kind of at that same place as we've got our findings, what we've heard so far. We're not to a recommendation stage yet. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew Dresner from Bolton and Mink, and we also have Chris Brewer on the line, and he can answer any financial questions that might come up. So I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jill. Um, and thank you all very much for uh, having me tonight and giving time to this important project. I appreciate it. My name is Andrew Dresner. Um, I'm an urban designer and planner with Bolton and Menk. Um, and as Jill mentioned, on the line is uh, my colleague on the project, Chris Brewer. He is um, with AECOM Economics. Um, and together, the two of us worked on the original master plan for the district um, over a decade ago, which was, we both would say, one of our favorite projects that we've worked on. Um, and uh, I couldn't help to notice that several awards for that for the Millwork District are in the lobby there, which is really a thrill. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to give a little bit of a presentation and then hopefully open it up for some discussion. I'll take a break in the middle, um, and Chris will come in through wherever he comes in through on the uh, go-to meeting and um, share some of his thoughts as well. You can hear me all okay? Okay. You can hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, all right, so I'll just talk about these five items, purpose and schedule, some primary questions. I'll go talk a little bit about the engagement, um, some of our findings, and some, pre some preliminary ideas. Um, as Jill mentioned, we're in a similar place in the project as the previous, as the parking study. I think we might be a little bit further than they are. Um, I should say that that project is a really big and complicated one. Not that this one isn't big and complicated, but this is an update to the existing master plan. Um, parking's, in a sense, starting from scratch. So we're, we're sort of doing an update 10 years, I don't know, 10, 11 years, something like that, on from the original one. And that's common to, to, do, an, to do an update. It's, it's quite common. Um, sometimes 10 years on into a project, you do a repo, you just do it over because something didn't go right or something significant has changed. Um, I wouldn't say that's the case here. Um, this really is just a, a, a review and a refresh. It's a chance to take stock of where we are, a chance to um, take a look at what's been accomplished and what hasn't, and all of that in, the, in light of how the world has changed in the last 10, 11 years or so. And it has changed a lot, not just the past three years, but going all the way back. Um, so on here are a couple photographs from uh, back in 2010 or so. Um, and I can remember walking the, I won't even call them streets because they weren't really streets back then, but I can remember walking the district back then. And I can remember uh, someone, I don't remember if it was a staff member or one of the building owners, um, saying something to the effect of, this is a place where you can, if you come down here, you're gonna break an ankle or an axle. I mean, it was rough and it, it, was, it was raw, but it was clear that the city saw great, great potential in, in this district. Um, so you see a couple pictures here of some of the bigger, sturdier, kind of older buildings. And you also see some pictures of kind of the quirkiness that existed back in the district um, back then. Um, it was largely uninhabited. Um, it was partially inhabited um, uh, during certain times of the year during events, but it was really a largely uninhabited place where there was uh, um, dirt, dirt roads, empty buildings, and, and a little bit of quirkiness um, as, as, uh, from, from the, the voices group and other folks who, who would spend some time in the district. Um, okay, so uh, in terms of the schedule, um, you can see here we're somewhere around halfway done or so maybe just a little bit, maybe past halfway. So we're um, into some of the ideas and ideas and exploration. And I'll share some of those with you. Um, and we anticipate this project to go forward another about three months or so, 
coming to you April, hopefully with a with a with a draft plan. Um, okay, so the status of redevelopment of the district. Um, I think you all familiar with the geography of it. Um, we it's often just called the triangle or the district. Um, in, in general, the, the district consists of about 1.3 million square feet of, of buildings, around 1.3, and about half of it has been redeveloped. So the Caradco building, the Novelty building, um, Dupaco, and a couple other of the smaller buildings have all been redeveloped. They were empty 10 years ago, now they're, they're pretty much fully occupied. And that's about, again, you can see on the graphic here, that's about half of the overall square footage of of the district. There's been a couple other um, important investments also in the district, uh, notably and relevant to our previous presentation, the parking garage in the middle of the district, the intermodal station um, that's connected to the parking garage, and then of course, and importantly, um, all new streets, well I shouldn't say all, new streets in half the district um, adjacent to those buildings that have been redeveloped. Again, they were kind of dirt roads at the time and now they're, they're quite excellent pieces of the public realm that are used not just for parking, but also for walking in quite, quite an excellent way. So in terms of status of redevelopment, about halfway done if we define the district as, as this triangle area. Um, okay. So here are a couple photographs comparing uh, 2010 to 2023. And you know, you'll see on, on the top two, the Caradco building back then to now, in some ways, it doesn't look that different because the building hasn't changed. But uh, if you go on the inside and even on the outside, it's, it's a different place. And then also the Alamo building, the bottom two uh, photographs. Um, you, if you've been down there, you, actually, I think the photograph on the right was just taken a couple days ago or last week. So that's underway. So you can see some really wonderful progress in the district. And um, the, it, it, it can't... I think it's worthwhile, again, noting that the district has received and the city received several awards from um, uh, federal national awards uh, on sustainability, local and state awards um, on, from uh, the uh, planning association. So it's been in many ways a, a success. Um, in terms of public engagement, um, pardon me, uh, I'll go through a couple of, I'll go through several of these items and, and the outreach that we did. First of all, we have a steering committee with, with whom we've met monthly. Um, we did not meet in December, but other than that, we've been meeting uh, monthly with a steering committee. The names are on the right-hand side here. Um, and the, there are, the, the committee was deliberately chosen and recruited uh, to participate in this process. And they represent um, a, a good range of stakeholders within the district and, and just beyond the district as well. So we have, um, Actually, some members in the audience here today are on the steering committee. You can raise your hand. We have Paul and Emily. Um, and they, represent, they and the, the names on the list here represent um, building owners, um, residents, uh, folks who run businesses in the district, employees, um, uh, representatives from uh, GDDC. So um, uh, we, we have a couple of young, very young folk, in the, young people in the district, um, a college student. Um, who doesn't live down in the district. And, and that was all intentional to get this kind of broad input to the district, both people who are there on a daily basis, people who are not there on a daily basis. That's really important. Andrew, quick pause, real quick. Um, thank you very much. I I'm hearing some feedback. Can we ask everyone who's online to please mute? We're hearing some, some sounds like somebody's not muted out there. Thank you. All right, go okay. on. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, we also conducted a series of focus group uh, discussions. Um, and those were simple, small room, intimate discussions, sometimes just two people, sometimes seven people. And in those groups, those, those were focused. So those are like with residents, with employees. Um, and we asked kind of open-ended questions. How is the district working for you? How is it not working for you? And just sort of followed up on, just on, on, on that line of, of questioning. Um, we also participated in the Arts Cafe, which some of you may have participated in as well, and that is run by uh, Jenny Peterson, I think it is, at the city. She invited us to come to one of her monthly events in which we um, interacted and talked and met with about 40 or 50 artists, um, of, of which, uh, from around the city, um, creatives that are not just in downtown or 
uh, in the district, but around the whole city. Um, we participated in the night market where we had a large blackboard and we took input. And then we also um, kind of ran uh, sidecar with the, the survey um, from the previous presentation, the parking survey. So that was put out, um, that was pushed out, and you could take one of the two surveys, meaning the parking survey or the district survey, or you could take both of them. Okay, so we kind of did it together so as to uh, increase our input as much as as much as possible. I believe that um, there were 800, and, I think the number is 823 responses. I think 600 people chose to do the uh, uh, Millwork District uh, survey. Okay, not exclusively. They probably did that and the parking one, but. Um, and then we've also had uh, staff workshop discussions to discuss um, uh, administration of the plan and how it has been going from, from, from their perspective over the past um, 10 years, okay? Um, so what did we hear? I'll go through a couple of the higher points that, of things that we've heard from, uh, from, from folks. Um, so from residents, of which Paul is here, um, in talking to them, they love living in the district, I would say. They, 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 they love living in the district. It's new, it's different. They each chose the, uh, to live there for a different reason. Um, uh, and, they, and they start off with uh, the discussion with, with tremendous enthusiasm. I will say 30 minutes into the discussion, they do start talking about the things that are missing and the things that would make the district better. And that's important to hear those things. Um, and often what comes up is, you know, it's great living here, but just a couple things, like it'd be great to be able to get a simple lunch or it'd be great to be able to get just a few groceries. We don't expect a big grocery store, but just a few. Um, it'd be great to have a place outside where we just kind of rest or even a place in the district where we could meet other, other, other people. Um, so that, that was really, that's really good input. Um, and it, it, you know, it came out after tremendous enthusiasm. From uh, business owners or from employers, I should say, or em employers, I should say, um, we spoke with a couple of them and th th many of them commented on how the district is actually a good back to the office uh, uh, recruiting tool. So there's a strong sense of place. The spaces are uh, uh, airy or light and airy. They're, they're, raw, they're, they're great internal spaces. Um, it's, and in many of them have said, you know, coming out of the pandemic, you know, I, in talking to my peers and other places around the city, we're, we're doing pretty well in terms of bringing people back to the office, which is really good. That's excellent. Um, from retailers, uh, um, we've heard, you know, it's, it's been tough. There's been a, you know, retailers have come and they've gone and, and there's, you know, it's still getting on their feet. There is a lack of foot traffic in the district, um, different times, different years, but there's a lack of foot traffic. Um, that said, a couple retailers um, are doing all right. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of their flagship location. It's strong for their brand. Um, there's a prestige that goes with it, and that helps some of their businesses. So it's a mixed bag on the retailing, on the retailing side. And that, of course, and Chris may talk about this, this is, that's in the context of a wildly changing kind of retail environment um, nationally. Um, from neighbors and the general community, um, it was that we heard kind of mixed bag situation. For, for some, it's a really cool destination. They go there for weddings or they go there for events or they bring visitors there. But I will say from a lot of people, um, it's not on their radar. And that for me was really surprising. Um, uh, you know, I, I, the awards that it's received, the, the acclaim. From, so from a lot of people, the district's just not quite on their radar. There's not, you know, some people just said it's nothing for me there. Um, and from lenders and developers, uh, generally speaking, there's a sense that there's a bullishness, a positivity about housing and, and hospitality. Um, I should say the events, the weddings, the, the fundraising events, do quite well in the district, so hospitality does quite well. But um, as I mentioned before, other some other uses, retail is making a harder go of it. And I only include office in here because that's even even though it's a, been a successful place for back to the office, um, office is a tough tough environment right now. So these were some of the sort of top line things that we've heard. Um, I want to take a pause now and allow Chris Brewer wherever he might be, 
to chime in with uh, some of his reflections and some of uh, his observations and, and, and findings. Chris, are you out there? <laughs> yes, Andrew, I hope I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you for giving me a moment here. Um, it was when Andrew gave me the option to uh, sort of revisit a study that we had done, what, 12, 13 years ago. It was uh, an easy decision to make. Uh, just having walked through the district, and again, for, for myself, having now been to you know, all of the lower 48 plus Alaska, um, it's really an amazing destination. I think just the things we noticed walking through, uh, some really impressive retailers, but you have to know they're there. And the thing we know with COVID these days is uh, our most successful retailers are probably generating 30 to 50% of their transactions from online business. So again, thinking about uh, that retail location differently than we would have thought pre-COVID, uh, but also just the reality of the nooks and crannies in the warehouse district. You're going to find certain things by accident unless you know exactly where you're going. Um, I think the other thing that that sort of struck me was just the reality of, or the, the I guess the good news that you know, following all of the major uh, street improvement projects around 2010, 2012. You know, by the time the Midwestern economy got going again, you know, 2014, 2015, um, we managed to see developers absorb, you know, just a little more than half of the space within the warehouse district. So now if we sort of take a good news view of sitting at the beginning of yet another, you know, extended period of economic growth for the Midwest. Um, you know, we have less than half of the remaining space left in the warehouse district to absorb. And that really is where I, I think one of the things that surprised me, although I guess in some respects not, um, obviously our developers in the first phase really ended up building slightly larger units, which dictated slightly higher rents. And we ended up with uh, arguably a slightly older um, apartment market. So I think one of the questions moving forward into the next phase is whether or not the, you know, the owners and or developers of property are able to deliver a mix of both larger units, but also smaller units to, you know, encourage some younger renters as well, again, to further diversify that mix. Um, and then I guess last but not least, thinking about the office market, again, a lot of debate nationally about office, uh, particularly post COVID. I think the consistent theme we've seen in the last year and a half is that the full amenity office locations are proving to be a lot more resilient. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest, whether it be uh, big cities, small cities, I think we're seeing that sort of that 20 to 30 to 40 year old office building with limited amenities amenities is really the big concern moving forward and a big interest there in talking about adaptive reuse for residential so you know we really do see residential leading out of this current uh period of economic drama but i think also um, again this notion of hospitality as well as you said um, for us retail will probably be somewhat more limited based on the build outs of each of the buildings and the ability to secure the appropriate tenants but uh, again from my perspective really an impressive location Andrew thank you Chris okay um, so what you see on the screen here are a series of statements that are um, is from the actually the first page of the uh, existing master plan. It's really the vision statement that was written in 2012, series of sentences. Um, what we did with the steering committee um, in one of our exercises in the fall was we, we took this vision statement and we just said, you know, uh, tell us in the past 12 years, um, how, how has the district performed on each of those statements? Has it, has it, uh, do you, do you agree that the district has accomplished it or do you not agree or somewhere in the middle? So you can see again, all the statements here. Um, and then the, the uh, um, this is sort of an average of the 15 steering committee members. And what I've done is really, I've just highlighted those that landed on the right-hand side of the spectrum. In other words, those areas where, you know what, maybe the district hasn't quite accomplished what we set out to yet uh, in, in 2012. So um, statements such as the district attracts designers and artists and businesses. You know, some people said, you know, I, I somewhat disagree or I, I disagree. Um, the district leverages and celebrates its proximity to the river and its proximity to downtown. Also kind of percolated as statements that maybe don't ring as true as we, we hope they would have back in, 
2012. And then finally, the one on the right, um, uh, uh, the arts flourish. Some people or many people in the district said, you yeah, know, not, not quite so much. You know, we kind of thought it would, but it, not, not quite as much. So I thought this was a good exercise just to sort of take temperature, take our temperature on, on, on whether or not the district is, is uh, progressing, engaging according to that vision. And, and in general, in many ways it is, um, but it falls short in a couple places. Um, and we also asked, you know, are these still important things? Um, and most people said, yeah, they, they still are important things. So some of our main findings here um, and needs for the district as we think about um, tweaking or refreshing or you know, uh, accelerating certain efforts um, over the next 10 years. Um, first of all, public space is very, very, very important. Um, I mentioned that with the residents uh, uh, focus group, but it's really a space for all different users um, to socialize, to convene, to mix, to enjoy. Um, so that's an important piece, we think, in the next uh, 10 years to, to, to invest in some sort of a public community space that's not just for the people who are there daily, but also that attract people who might not otherwise come to a space, come, come to the district. So a space that's perhaps an artful space, a seasonal space, um, a space that encourages socializing, rest, relaxation, et cetera. Um, Inclusivity is a, another issue I think that's worthwhile working on um, because the district does lack that broad cross-section of people coming in on a daily and weekly basis. It's got some, but it's, uh, it, 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 it definitely lacks a little bit. Um, connectivity uh, is an important issue. So um, the district uh, is not particularly well connected to other parts of the city. And that's actually common for industrial districts, which was, this was. Um, uh, when we think about the triangle, uh, it's got one edge, which is a viaduct. Another edge are a pair of one-way streets, um, central, central and white are one-way streets. Um, and then the, the north edge goes into the Washington neighborhood, I believe it is. Um, and so kind of penetrating the triangle is a little bit challenging for people. Um, and that also relates to uh, topics in the previous presentation, wayfinding um, and parking as well. I couldn't help but to notice coming into town that on the big highway signs, um, the Port of Dubuque is you know, downtown, um, uh, uh, it, uh, are, are on the big signs, but the district is, is not. Um, likewise, around downtown, the wayfinding is lacking to get you to the district. Um, and that's important because the, the buildings themselves kind of, you know, because they're so big and, and kind of bulky, they, they kind of create a wall. Yeah, you can get through, but there's really no front door to the, to the district, which is, I think is, is important. So there's, people know it's there, but the edges to it are, are a bit tough. Um, serendipity is another item I think that's important. So. Um, the district has a bit of a, a curated feel to it. Um, some people call it a, a museum. <laughs> um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it wins awards, because you, you're there, you're like, wow, you know, it, it is sort of eye-opening. And, and, you know, um, Chris mentioned that. But the flip side to that, and we've heard this from people that don't spend a lot of time in the district, is that there's an air of formality to it an air of inaccessibility to it. Yes, it's public, no one's stopping you from going, but um, as Chris mentioned, the price point of housing is higher than what was, it's market rate, but it's higher than what was anticipated. Um, so there's that lack of serendipity because of, of a sense of formality to it. Um, and then uh, the final point, amenity. The district lacks some amenities in, that are important for daily users. Some of that is just, um, uh, Outdoor space, some of that I mentioned earlier, is simple lunch options, um, et cetera. So um, in terms of some of the preliminary ideas that um, were, were sort of floating out there, um, four main categories. First of all, um, and this is somewhat self-evident, complete the redevelopment. Keep moving. Keep moving south, right? All the redeveloped buildings are on the northern portion of the triangle. Keep, keep moving south. Um, come out of the recession or inflation or cycle or whatever we want to call it 
leading with housing. Um, roof, well, it's, we don't call them rooftops, but housing is always important. It brings foot traffic. It drives um, a lot. Of, it, it can help drive a little bit of retail. So emphasizing housing is important. Um, we also think it's important to start thinking about um, infill housing outside the triangle in that zone between the district and Main Street that's defined by, in, in a way, defined by those two one-way streets. Um, to the degree that we can, or the city can start to find infill housing just outside the district, that's, that would be a good thing because it would help the connections to Main Street, the east-west pedestrian connections. It would also provide a different type of housing. Not everyone wants that raw space. New construction is a good thing for, for some, some people. It also might allow you to um, uh, get different populations and different price points um, into, the, in, into the area and into the district. Um, so a few key amenities. I mentioned simple lunch, possibly grocery is important. Um, a community space. I've referred to that previously as, as a, um, the public realm or a gathering space, very important. I think, again, I mentioned uh, artful, um, seasonal, social type space would be very important for the district, not just for people who live there, but for people to come otherwise. Um, and then for the district to continue, not just to be a, res a neighborhood leading with housing, but also um, it, it, it has the potential also to be an attraction for visitors. You have a, actually a big tourism business here, and the district can play a, continue to play a strong role in that. Um, you have one uh, in, in that the public space that I was referring to earlier can be part of that. Um, and then there's also a, a one, uh, 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 though most of the warehouse buildings are similar to those that have been redeveloped, the lumber shed is a spectacular building if you haven't been in it. It's really quite a, quite a wonderful feature that, that could be one of these types of attractions to draw, um, draw visitors, as well as being amenity for people who live there. Um, enhancing connections and wayfinding is also, I think, a very, very important um, uh, piece to, to, to think about. Um, just as the simple things like uh, the, the city owns and runs a parking lot um, just on the north edge of it. For the visitor, you le you, if you find the parking, you're in good luck, you're, you're lucky. Exiting the parking, making your way to the district, which is not a long walk, is a little bit tenuous. Um, so uh, an investment in, in, in that sort of human experience of getting from the car to the district is really important. Um, the district can't rely on the central parking, which it has currently now. It has the ramp and, and then the space next to it. It can't rely on parking in the middle forever. Um, in the long term, the middle should not be where you store cars, it should be where you socialize, where you gather, et cetera. And then finally, um, promoting the arts and placemaking is really important. That speaks to uh, bringing a diversity of people into the district. Um, it speaks to uh, um, uh, adding serendipity and spontaneity um, and a looseness to the, to the district um, as well. So just to conclude, um, I have this image up on the screen and it uh, talks to a series of those points. Um, a community space in the middle of the district. You can see the sort of second half of the triangle uh, redeveloping from uh, right to left, which would be towards the south. The idea of making connections up to Main Street is really important and those connections um, can be made with infill housing. You see a couple locations that might be oriented to those uh, numbered streets so that that uh, pedestrian connection is nice and easy. And then also thinking about um, 7th Street is a really, really important connection, not just for the district, but for the downtown and the riverfront. 7th Street um, potentially could connect right up to the park outside the door here, right across to Main Street, to the, the clock tower, um, down through the district, all the way down to the shot tower and to the river. That could be a really, really strong connection through the city that would start to tie together um, the district to not just downtown, but to the riverfront and the, and the port um, as well. So um, with that, um, questions, discussion?
All right. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. We appreciate this. Um, yeah. Before I open it up, I have a quick question. I'm, I guess I was looking for it as you were talking because I was I'm trying to recall. Have we received the full, like, a full report from you on all the data that you've gotten? You know, the raw data, those types of things. Is that does that exist, and have we received it? And I sincerely apologize if I'm. No, that's okay. We submitted a uh, an initial report. I should say that um, uh, unlike um, uh, the parking study, this is not a data hard numbers data study. Sure. It's more of a, a, a softer data s study. So we, we submitted an initial sort of trends report. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that, that, that's where we are. Gotcha. Okay. So, and, and I guess I'm asking Jill or, Jill or Mike, has that come to us? I'm just trying to remember if I've seen that or if I don't remember. Okay. Is, is that something we could receive if, I, if we haven't? Yeah, you definitely have seen the yeah, full that thing. Yeah, submitted maybe late October or something. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to that. I'm, I'm, and I sincerely apologize. I'm almost positive we have that somewhere. I'm just wondering where to locate it. So if we could get that via email to be able to to see that fully, that would be really helpful. Sure. Um, just just to see the the full picture along with the main findings and things like that would be very useful, I think, for me. All right. Questions, discussion. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Resnick. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your presentation and welcome back. Um, so, uh, Mr. Jones and I were here with you uh, here 10 years ago and uh, 12 years ago. We appreciate uh, seeing you again. Um, so my question is about that passing of time and, and how we talk about this area. You called it the warehouse district and we call it the millwork district. And actually, we call it the historic millwork district. And so I'm wondering, so that's very, um, you know, it's very descriptive. And, uh, but I was kind of catching on to, you just call it the district many times. And I'm just wondering if what you're looking at is also uh, perhaps a marketing uh, suggestion for them. You talked about the uh, Millwork District as a prestige place, but we have, you know, disparate and independent businesses in that area. But we don't, so we don't really have a collection of, what do we call that? Do we? You know, do we ask or do we suggest uh, to businesses to say bicycle world in the in the millwork district or brazen open kitchen in the millwork district? And we, you know, Seven Hills Brewing, you know, so we make it a, a place is marketing part of what you're going to be suggesting as as part of your update. I do want to jump in. That's not something that we've studied up to this point as far as branding. Um, that does those sorts of conversations do happen with our we have monthly historic Millwork district stakeholder meetings that have been taking place for a number of years even before um, this process started and that does get talked about of how uh, they could work with the organization of Dubuque Main Street to work on a marketing uh, and branded cam campaign you know as needed and I think Maybe you can talk a little bit about retail again, but something is needed, but I don't know that that's been included as part of the scope of work here. Okay, thank you. And, but in general, do things change over time? And you say this is over 10 years old, whereas we are very descriptive in our title of this station. And now people know and uh, uh, people take pictures down there all the time. It's an exciting place to be. Um, but of course, they, as you mentioned, not a lot of people know the you know, that there's a lot of places they can go and find really great businesses. And so is marketing and is something that, uh, or, or the name that we call a place, does it change over time in other cities? Um, I wouldn't, if the question is, is there a problem with the historic Millwork District as a name? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's the problem, but I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't think that's a, a problem. Okay, so that's not something, just, just, uh, just wondering. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Others? Ms. Wethel. I just have a quick question on the preliminary recommendations. Um, we talk about having 7th Street be more of our thoroughfare to the area, which I think is a great idea. However, it shows that there's a road that directly connects to the clock tower. Yeah. So are you advocating we make a new road? Uh, well, it's a... <laughs> You, you notice something. Uh, okay, so there are two ramps there yeah. that kind of crisscross across 7th. So 
I took liberties. Um, I know you're in a parking discussion. Maybe there's a way to, and I don't know, but maybe there's a way to either detach the crisscrossing and get yourself a pedestrian connection up. I don't know if you can get a road up, but because of slope and whatnot. But um, can can we, you know, exhibit some creativity here given the whole parking discussion? Can we think of ways to improve that pedestrian connection all the way up? Thank you. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd like to add to that also. We've had some proposals from a couple of different developers in town having that same idea of is there a way that we can get through on 7th Street um, okay. to connect the art museum and the businesses, the, the business district to the millwork district to the port. So that's, that's been in discussion from people more creative than myself. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Ms. Barber, anything from you? Yeah. Yes, just uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to follow up on 7th Street, it looks like 10th Street is also, uh, there's an opportunity there potentially for um, a connector, especially with some of the businesses right there on White Street. Just asking. I, I, you, I think you're right. And if I'm not mistaken, 10th has been partially improved in the past or maybe fully improved in the past uh, 10 years um, as that connection. And uh, I think that may have been part and parcel to the first plan and one of the reasons why that end of the district developed first. Okay. Well, I wasn't part of that conversation 10 years ago, but I always take 10th Street, whether I'm in my food truck or whether I'm coming down to the corridor there, that seems to be the fastest and most efficient. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Well, I, um, this is, thank you again for this presentation. We really appreciate it. I, I think, uh, you know, obviously uh, this, this definitely, I hate to use, it's gonna be, a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say connects to the discussion that we've talked about, um, you know, just for, uh, because the connections are what we're really talking about. I mean, we've, we've been having discussions about Central recently and how we can look at the Central Avenue corridor differently. We've had lots of discussions about connecting people over, uh, you know, we have a raise grant that looks at the potential connections for pedestrians over 14th Street um, at uh, the overpass there, um, a possible overpass for railroad traffic there that would connect people to our Chaplain Schmidt Island development. I think as we think about all of this, the, the connections between each of the different plans and the ways that we put all these things together as we look at our downtown area is incredibly important. Um, not just for the the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, all of us who live there, work there, play there, but uh, you mentioned tourism. You know, we saw a piece of that last year. Um, if, the, if the mighty Mississippi cooperates just a little bit more next year, we're gonna see even more of it because uh, the ships had to stop cruising in the, mid, the late part of the season. Uh, but there was, it was action packed down there. And I think the, the Millwork District has that real possibility along with connecting it in every other way that we're talking about here. So these, these were incredibly helpful discussions tonight. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you also, Chris, for, for joining us virtually um, and adding your piece to it. We really appreciate it. So I'm not seeing any more hands going up. So it looks like we're, we're done with this work session. So thank you very much. And there being, no, yeah, there being no further business, we will stand adjourned. Thank you.